Uh, good morning, everybody, as we worship together here at uh, Christ Lutheran. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, the James Bible Study is continuing on Wednesday, and we're having a good time with that. And so you could feel free to bounce in and uh, join us on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. Our confirmation class is continuing, and they're doing good work uh, as we meet virtually on that. And um, just a couple quick announcements on uh, how we do worship on Zoom. And it's a new world for a lot of us. And I was trying to translate Zoom etiquette into church worship. And so um, I was thinking about that this past week. And so if we chat during the worship service, it's a lot like whispering to your uncle whose hearing aid battery is dead in the pew next to you. It gets a little distracting for everybody. And then if uh, you have to get up and move and have a cup of coffee, which is perfectly fine, you might want to think about turning off your video because that also gets distracting. That's kind of like having somebody fuss in the pew ahead of you. It kind of makes everybody kind of gravitate towards that. So um, we'll do well. We did great the first time. And uh, this has really been a treat to have everybody gathered together here for a worship service. Uh, one other thing that popped up this morning um, is uh, Zoom had some national issues on uh, getting things going this morning. Apparently a lot of churches back east were using it and uh, the system just didn't respond. So if anything happens and you can't get into Zoom, uh, don't worry about that. We'll probably find a way to record it and we'll put it up later. But we're dependent on this one platform and sometimes they do have technical issues. And so uh, not to worry if you can't get in. Um, I believe that's it. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. I will send the advocate the spirit of truth. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Amen. We confess together. Savior Lord, your life is a gift to us in this time and place. We know that the hum human family hurts with the pain of disease and brokenness. We are not in control of our lives, either for the good we wish to do or resisting evil, even the evil that a virus can bring upon humanity. We gather together as your people and we confess our sin, even in the midst of this time of trial. Gracious God, we confess that we fall short of your good intentions for an abundant life. We are fearful when we should stand strong for our safety. We fall prey to things that are not your will when we worry about a future that makes us feel powerless. Remind us that we are your creatures, that we have this treasure in clay jars. The power is yours alone, even as we stand weak and unsure before you. Forgive us our sin, both in the things we have done and in the things we have left undone. Amen. Jesus saves us from sin and evil. He brings us to a new place as the good shepherd of his flock. He forgives sin because of the cross and the empty tomb of Easter. In him we find life. In him we find truth. In him there is always a way towards life and purpose. Even if we suffer for what, doing what is right, we are blessed by you, O Lord. May we know the deepest truth of God's love, his forgiveness, and love for one another. Amen. This time we'll hear from Katie. The special music of the day um, is a solo arrangement of If Ye Loved Me by Thomas Tallis. If ye loved me, my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you a 
Thank you, Brian. We join together now in the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear God's word. The first reading this morning is from Acts 17, verse 22, 31. Paul stood in front of the Arab officials and, and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life, life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence, and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, through indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, as an image formed by the, by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance by all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is 66, 1, 8 through 20. Bless our Lord, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver has tried. Tied. You brought us, brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens up on our backs. You let people ride over our hearts. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into the place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you, my, pay you my vows, those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all of you who believe, and I will tell you that God has done for me. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer nor withheld unfailing love for me. The second reading this morning is from 1 Peter 3, verses 13 to 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated. 
but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for what for the hope that, you, that is in you. Yet do, do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for the doing evil. For Christ has suffered for sins once and for all, once and for all the righteousness of the unrighteous in this order to bring you to God. He was put to death in flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in, pris in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which few, that is, eight persons were saved through water, and baptism, which was prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from, your, from the body, but as appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, as it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Christ. Readings to you on the 17th of May. I will send you an advocate. That's Jesus' promise for us this morning. Now, an advocate may seem like a quaint idea for us until you actually need an advocate. Just buy a house and you'll find out that you need an advocate to represent you and get a good price. And that can make quite a difference, right? In our court system, back then and also now, getting legal representation is part of getting justice. An advocate takes your side of the case and does their best to debate your side of the problem to an arbiter, a judge, or a jury. Martin Luther had to be an advocate of a grace-centered faith when he was debating his opponents during the Reformation. It was at such a debate where he was said to have said, here I stand, I can do no other. And we're the descendants of someone who advocated for grace and love. Maybe you can think back on your life and think of all the times you've had someone advocate for you. That was on, somebody that was on your side, someone that took up your cause. This morning, Jesus promises to be our first advocate, but then he sends us a second one too. Jesus promises to send us his spirit when the disciples, just like us, are most in need of a caring presence. When we wonder if someone will take up our cause of life, the needs of the people, and bring hope in the midst of a world that's turned upside down. The theologian Carolyn Lewis reminds us that Jesus knows the way ahead for us. Jesus knows what we cannot do on our own. He knows that we'll be called to face things that we can't do without an advocate at our side. The human temptation is to do all things and to be all things. And we need reminders that it's not our job to do everything right now. We can't do it all like we used to think we could. 
and old generations are getting a taste of life's true limitations. It's simply enough now to have food and shelter, safety, friends and family, and especially one's health. It's simply enough to live and protect ourselves and our neighbors. Things like wearing a mask to protect the grocery store worker that has to be there and be a public witness to say that because by wearing a mask, I care about you. It is simply enough to be a Christian. That's why Jesus sends us a second helper, our advocate, the spirit walking alongside us, a companion that is Jesus' very presence. We are worried and troubled on so many levels right now by so many things. The hopelessness is indeed staggering sometimes. We cry out, Lord, have mercy, and our advocate hears. Now, an old word for the advocate was paraclete. No, Jesus is not sending us a little green and yellow bird to put in a cage. The paraclete was simply an old translation. Some translations call the spirit the comforter, but that's a bit too narrow a word. Others call it the intercessor, and that's more to the point. No matter what English word we use for this, we're promised a helper. When God's presence seems to be most needed or most questioned, we hear Jesus promise to be with us, especially in times of vulnerability, fear, and uncertainty. Luther would see this work of the advocate as calling us to faith, gathering us together in mission, opening our eyes to wisdom and justice, and giving us the ability to do the right thing and live by his grace alone in the world. The advocate is with us. It works through our hearts in each and every chapter of our lives. The word the Spirit implants in us might be one thing when we were young, yet another in middle age, and still yet another thing for us in our older years. We might have a wisdom and that wisdom might be given to us now, and it might be a wisdom that we didn't need before. But the advocate is alive, always updating us, giving us new ways to think and to do. It gives us the courage to stay healthy and to keep our neighbors healthy, because Jesus' spirit is never far from us. In these unknown days, I rest knowing that I have an advocate, a companion that will bring to mind God's ways and keep my values, ethics, and faith centered. Daily, the Spirit reminds us of all the truths of Jesus' teaching, death, and resurrection. Notice that it doesn't replace Jesus, but the Spirit points to the presence of the risen Easter Jesus and his Father's love and reminds us of the community of saints that surround us, even when we are apart and can only meet on Zoom. Saints that do works of love and service and duty. We have an advocate at our side. In all the debates of life, we have a strong voice to defend us, to comfort us, and to keep us in the way, the truth, and the life. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn at home, and it's hymn number 415, if you have a hymnal, hymn 415, Father Most Holy.
We now join together in a prayer uh, for stewardship. Let us pray. God of all, we thank you for the gifts you have so generously given to us, our health and home, for all that makes for life in these times. In return, we give you our gifts of thanksgiving as expression of love for you in the ministry of the church, in ways that are familiar and also with new ways of stewardship. We thank you for love and mercy and the promise of life in you as we give you our response to all that has come before us. Amen. We now confess together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now join together in prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our example of living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of the oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. For Puget Sound and the rivers that run into it, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. May the truth of the natural world you created and designed to be said with conviction and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. You lift up those who are downtrodden. We pray for those who suffer in any way at this time, in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Grant us patience, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you join in your own prayers at this time via the chat or silently to yourself.
for Betty and Ed, who recently passed away. For Evan and Maddie. Sarah and David. For Mrs. G, for Doug, for Dad, for Healing, With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life and fill you with hope and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. At this point, we sing our sending hymn. Hymn number four, 241, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. be in your home and fill you with peace and hope, Easter joy and steadfast courage. Let us go forth into the day sheltered from harm and filled with resolve and truth. Amen. We invite you to stay around after Katie plays the postlude and we'll have a little time for chat. Katie? <laughs> 